after we have seen the overview of dynamic time wrapping, let's see how it works. Basically, dynamic time wrapping consists of two steps. The first step is to create a cost matrix, and the second step is to construct a path or an alignment based on the matrix. So let's start with the step one. Let's Let's assume that we have a time series X, which which has m time units, and a time series Y, which has n time units. Then we would con construct a matrix with a size m by n, just like here. And then we would compute each of the element. For example, this J and then this i. We would compute each of these squares by using this formula, which is the distance plus the minimum of some of the other squares. And then uh, it may be a bit confusing if you if we just look at this. So we would like to use some real figures and work through the construction process. Okay, so let's replace the time series x and y with some real numbers. If you look at the x and y here, you may see that actually it, it is just a shift. As you may see, the, num the number underlie are the same. So x and y are very similar, it is just a shift. But under the point by point comparison of uh, Euclidean distance, you cannot notice this similarity. But dynamic time wrapping can. And we are now going to see how we do it. Okay, so let's move on to this step one. We will construct a matrix which, which look like this. And then we will start from the lower left corner which is here and then by this formula we would just uh, compute the distance between this and this first as 1 minus 1 is equals to 0 and we don't have any squares which is on the left or on the bottom of of this circle this cell so we will just fill in zero for this for this square. Okay, with similar technique, we can calculate all the other values in the same column. Um, maybe we we'll take a look at this six and figure out how it comes from. First, we apply this. Uh, we apply the formula to calculate the distance, which is three minus 1 which is 2 and then we find the minimum of these three squares since this 6 doesn't have anything on the left so the only square that we are considering is this 4 so we add up the 2 and the, the and the number 4 and then we get 6 so we fill in 6 And then we follow the same logic and we would we would calculate all the cells in this matrix. If we take a look at another cell here, this time it has it has cells on its left, on its bottom, and also on the diagonal. So when you calculate this six, you need to take consider of the minimum of this three, six, and ten. And it, ha in, it seems that the minimum is 3. So you add up the difference, which is 5 minus 2, which is 3, and then the minimum, which is also 3. And then the answer is 6, so you fill in 6. So you follow the same logic, and you can compute the value of all the squares. Of course, um, it should be done in done by the computer in in the real case. 
if we take a look at the formula again, actually this web distance drj depends on some some of the d which is calculated previously or in another work it is actually a recursion this dij depends on some of the d which has a smaller i or j and then each of those circled d would depends on the d with even smaller i and j until we reach the base case which is here so actually this is a recursion problem or we are doing it in a dynamic programming way so let's move on to step two which is to construct the web path um actually this is quite easy um you may ignore these rules which seem so complicated basically this is a greedy it is a greedy search and you just compare the value and choose the one that seems the best so what the so let's look at the matrix that we have just computed we will start from the last element which is at the end of each of the time series in here it is represented by this three and then what what we what would we do we would compare the element which is on its left on its diagonal and on its bottom which of this is the smallest would like to pick the smallest one in here clearly it is this zero and then we continue at this point we compare this one this zero and this one and clearly we would pick the zero and then we continue and continue until we find all of this the path and then we reach here when would we end this process it is when we reach here the last element which is also the beginning of this two time series so we come from the the end of the two time series and we go to the other end of the two time series you may ask why there are so many zero in the path we found it is because as mentioned before this x and this y are just the shape of each other this should be very similar if we can have a way to compare the time series so what is the distance value after we have computed all this the distance of these two time series is equal to all the numbers in this web path so in here since there are so many zeros the distance is just three so the distance between x and y can be represented by a single value three so it can be demonstrated that if we just shift a time series the distance would be very small because most of the squares in our path would be zero or close to zero